Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are unboxing and setting up the Bamboo Lab A1 combo. And yep, the one that comes with the AMS light built in. If this is your first time opening one of these, don't worry because I'll walk you through the whole thing step by step. From taking everything out of the box, assembling the frame, plugging in the cables, to setting up the AMS, all of it nice and easy. By the end of this video, you'll have your A1 fully assembled and ready for your very first print. So let's crack open the box and get started. So yeah, I've been using the Anycubic Cobra 2 Neo for a while now. It's done a pretty good job, but lately I've been printing a lot more than usual, and I've got some bigger projects on the way. So I figured, okay, time to level up. And that's why I grabbed the Bamboo Lab A1. This is the combo version, which includes the AMS light, so it's a bit heavier than usual. Just something to keep in mind when you're lifting it, especially if you're doing it alone. As soon as you open the top layer, the first thing you'll see is the PEI build plate, and right next to it is the quick start guide. I'd recommend keeping that manual. It's really useful if you get stuck during setup or just want to double check something later. All right, let me move that aside and we'll check out what's underneath. Under that top layer, you'll find the rest of the AMS light accessories, all tucked neatly into the foam. First, there's the AMS mounting bracket. This clips onto the printer to hold the AMS unit in place and helps guide the filament tubes cleanly. Next to that are four spool holders. These just snap into the AMS light and hold your filament rolls. Super simple setup. You'll also find a small black toolbox. Don't skip it. It has useful extras like a spare PTFE tube, nozzle wipers, and some tools you'll probably need later. And then there's this box with the rainbow stripe on it. That's your color sample pack. It comes with short lengths of filament in different colors, great for testing multicolor prints right out of the box. All right, that's it for this layer. Now let's move to the AMS light. Now we're in the third layer, and this is where you'll find the AMS light unit. It's packed right in the center, nice and secure inside the foam. It's compact, lightweight, and it feels way more solid than you might expect. There are four filament input ports on top, each one color-coded from one to four. Right next to it, you'll see the main power cable for the printer. Make sure not to confuse this with anything AMS related. This cable powers the entire A1 unit. There's also a single spool holder here, used for basic one-color prints when you don't need the AMS. It attaches directly to the back of the printer. And finally, tucked neatly into the corner, you've got a filament cutter. It's small, sharp, and super handy for trimming filament before loading it into the AMS or extruder. And that's everything in this final layer. Small items, but all essential to getting your printer fully set up and ready to go. All right, now we're finally getting to the good part, the actual body of the printer. So at the bottom of the box, you'll find two main pieces. The first one is the U-shaped frame. That's the part with the tool head and all the wiring. Go ahead and grab it from both sides of the metal frame. Just make sure not to lift it by the tool head, the bed, or any of the cables. Trust me, that's a bad idea. Set it down gently on your workspace. Now you'll see there are a few zip ties holding everything in place for shipping. They're wrapped around the tool head and some of the wiring. Just grab a pair of cutters or scissors and snip those off. Take your time, don't rush it. No one wants to accidentally slice a cable on day one. Next up, you've got the base of the printer, the part with the print bed and the touchscreen. Same thing here, lift from the metal frame, not the bed. It's not too heavy, but just awkward enough to make you want to be careful. Now, once you've got both pieces out, it's time to connect them. All right, before we connect the frame to the base, there's one quick step we need to do first. Flip the base over, just carefully lay it upside down on something soft. You don't want to scratch the screen or the bed. Now, if you look underneath, you'll see four screws holding the heated bed in place. These are shipping screws. They lock the bed during transport so it doesn't bounce around. You'll need to remove all four of them using the screwdriver that came in the toolkit earlier. They're easy to miss, but trust me, if you skip this step, the bed won't move properly later on and your printer's not gonna run. Once you've removed all four, flip the base back over, 
gently. Now take a look near the back corners. You'll see small circular markings in blue around a few screw holes. Those are alignment markers. That's where we'll be dropping the M4 screws in later to secure the frame to the base. All right, now let's go ahead and attach the frame to the base. I find it easier if you tilt the base back just a little, then gently slide the U-frame into position. It'll drop right into place when the bottom rails line up. Once it's seated properly, grab the bag of M4 screws from the toolbox. You'll find a bunch of them in a small zip bag. We're gonna need eight in total. There are six mounting points along the back of the printer and two more in the front, just behind the screen. You'll see those blue circle markings again. That's where the screws go in. Start by hand threading each one to make sure they're aligned. Then grab your screwdriver and tighten them all down. No need to overdo it, just snug enough so everything feels solid and locked in. And yeah, make sure you install all eight screws. Don't skip any. Every one of them plays a role in keeping the frame stable. Once that's done, congrats. Your frame is now fully secured to the base and the machine's really starting to take shape. All right, here's the easiest way to plug in the front cable module without struggling. Flip the entire printer face down, just like this. Screen side down, back of the printer facing up. Make sure you're on a soft surface so you don't scratch anything. Now grab the front connector module, the one with the motor and camera ports, and slide it right into the slot underneath the front panel. At the bottom of that module, there's a USB-C style connector. Line it up carefully and press it into the port on the machine until it clicks into place. Once that's locked in, go ahead and connect the other three cables. Start with the Z motor. That one plugs into the yellow port. Then the X motor into the green one right below it. And finally, the camera cable goes into the white port on the right. Everything's clearly labeled and the connectors only go in one way. Just be gentle, line them up properly, and push them in until they're snug. Once all the cables are connected and the module is seated clean, you can flip the machine back over and move on to the next step. All right, last couple of steps before we wrap things up. First, grab the PEI build plate, line it up with the bed. The magnets will pull it right into place. It only fits one way, so if it feels off, just flip it around. Now, for the filament cutter. This one's a bit more involved. You'll find a small mounting slot on the side of the printer. Slide the cutter into place, and then secure it using the M3 screw included in the toolbox. Use the small screwdriver we used earlier. Just tighten it until it feels firm. And that's it. Everything's installed, locked in, and ready to go. Let's start with the AMS light base. Flip the AMS unit over, and you'll spot four screw holes underneath. Take the base, line it up carefully, and use the screws from the toolbox to secure it. No need to crank it too hard. Just make sure it's snug and steady. Once that's in, flip the whole thing back upright and you're good. Now onto the spool holders. You've got four in total, two with yellow caps, two with green. On each side of the AMS, there are little arms where these clip in. Just line up the holders with the pegs, give them a firm push until they click into place. They should sit flush and feel nice and solid. And don't worry, you don't need to memorize port numbers or anything, just match the colors. Yellow to yellow, green to green, and you're all set. That's it, AMS is looking good and ready for your prints. All right, let's get those PTFE tubes connected. You've got four in total, two short ones and two long ones. The short tubes go to the spools that are closer to the printer's extruder. The longer ones go to the ones farther away. Once you've got them hooked up to the AMS side, go ahead and plug the other ends into the top of the printer frame. Right above the tool head, you'll see four little ports lined up with a built-in plastic guide to keep everything nice and tidy. Push each tube in until it clicks. They should feel snug, but don't jam them in too hard. And don't forget the AMS power cable. On the back of the printer, just under the top rail, there's a little rectangular port. That's where the AMS cable goes. 
plug it in, make sure it's seated well, and you're done. And that's it. AMS light is all set. Tubes are plugged in, cables connected, everything's locked down. Now you're ready to move on and get things set up for your very first print. We'll cover the first print setup in a separate video so you can follow along without any stress. Take your time, no need to rush it. If you found this helpful, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment if you've got questions. I always try to reply. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.